The exchange system and versions of it is utilized by many diet plans and programs. For example, the exchange system concept is the basis for Weight Watchers. We will learn an abbreviated version of the exchange system in this course. The goal is to provide the student with the ability to estimate macronutrient and calorie content of food groups. In a later assignment, you will use this information to estimate the amount of insulin needed for an insulin-dependent diabetic. The exchange system is a classification method. Foods are placed into eight food groups based on the similarity in macronutrient and energy or calorie content. For example, cheese and eggs are in the meat group because they contain approximately the same amount of protein, fat, and calories as one ounce of chicken or lean beef. Corn, peas, potatoes are all included in the starch bread group because they also contain similar amounts of carbohydrate, fat, protein, and calories as a slice of bread or other starchy item. Some items may be found in multiple lists. For example, a small amount of raw cabbage is treated as a free food list item because the calories are less than 20, but cooked cabbage appears in the vegetable list. More calories are absorbed from cooked cabbage, so when cooked, cabbage goes into the vegetable list where one serving has 25 calories. The exchange system was originally developed by the American Dietetic Association and the American Diabetic Association to assure their macronutrient distribution was evenly provided throughout the day. This prevents dramatic increases and decreases in blood sugar. Diabetics use the system to control carbohydrate intake at meals and snacks. Then they take a set dose of insulin to cover the amount of carbs consumed. People seeking to lose weight use the exchange system to follow a calorie control diet that still allows for a variety of foods because foods can be exchanged for each other within lists and maintain the same amount of calories. For example, if a person was prescribed three starches for breakfast, he or she could choose two pieces of toast and a serving of grits one morning the next morning, the three starches could be two small muffins and cereal. Although the exchange system includes a combination fast food exchange list, it discourages the com consumption of low, I'm sorry, it encourages the consumption of low fat, low sugar food items and emphasizes consumption of whole foods like fruits, vegetables, low fat meats and dairy products rather than the fast foods and high sugar or fatty foods. Athletes can use the information to keep a running total of calories or grams of protein consumed throughout the day. Dietitians use the exchange system to develop menu plans for diabetics or people seeking to lose weight. Meal plans using the exchange system can be customized. Foods in the exchange system are divided based on chemical composition regarding macronutrient content. For example, a fruit exchange has 60 calories, 15 grams of carb, no fat, and no protein. Specified portions of foods in each group are exchangeable with the other foods in that group. So, in the fruit list, one half cup of orange juice can be exchanged for a cup of strawberries without increasing calories and carbohydrate content. Foods classified into groups based on similarity in macronutrients are starch, fruit, milk, vegetables, meat and meat substitutes, and by the way, some of the meat substitutes will also appear in the starchy list. There's also a fat group, a free group, and a combination. Students will need to learn to assign the different foods to these groups. Students will also need to memorize the number of calories in each group, the number of grams carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Students are not required to memorize serving sizes. These can easily be searched in any database. We'll start first with the starch group. One starch exchange has 15 grams of carbohydrate, 3 grams of protein, relatively no fat, and 80 calories. Examples are a half a cup of oatmeal, a slice of bread, half of a muffin, half of a hot dog or hamburger bun, 
or a half a cup of a starchy vegetable. The fruit group has 15 grams of carb per serving, no protein, no fat, and 60 calories. Example would be a small banana or half of a large banana, one and a quarter cup of strawberries, half a cup of orange juice, three quarter cup of fresh pineapple. Serving size really dictates, uh, the serving sizes contribute to the total calories, so you have to pay attention to that. In the milk group, a serving, usually one eight ounce cup, has 12 grams of carbohydrate, eight grams of protein, five grams of fat, and 120 calories. These are the numbers that you need to memorize, even though there are two additional subgroups in here, such as whole milk and uh, total skim milk. We're just going to stick with the 2% or low fat. The vegetable group has 5 grams of carb, 2 grams of protein, no fat, and 25 calories per serving. You can look again at a database to determine the serving size. Generally, it's a half a cup of cooked or one cup of raw. There are four different subgroups in the meat list. For the purposes of this class, we will only hold the student responsible for the medium fat. Per ounce, medium fat has 75 calories, 7 grams of protein, and 5 grams of fat. Since most people eat more than one ounce of meat, it will be important to multiply the number of ounces in a serving by 75, 7, and 5. So if a person had a 3 ounce portion of medium fat meat, we would multiply 75 calories times 3, 7 grams of protein times 3, 5 grams of fat times 3. Examples of 1 ounce of medium fat meat include an egg, 1 ounce of cheese, an ounce of lean beef fish, poultry. Per serving, the fat group has no carbohydrate, no protein, 5 grams of fat, and 45 calories. And again, you see examples here. Fat exchanges are often hidden along with other foods. When you look at the exchange system in the back of your textbook, you will note that Several foods will contain a couple of uh, fat exchanges along with them. For example, French fries would be considered a starch, but it also includes several fat exchanges as well. If we want to calculate carb exchanges using food labels, we simply look at the total grams of carb on the food label and make sure that the estimate is 12 to 15 grams. When we use the exchange system, you see that milk, fruit, and starch exchanges have approximately the same amount of carbs per serving, about 12 to 15 grams. When using a food label, look at total grams and divide by 15. That gives you the number of carb exchanges. So, for this food item, we see that it has 15 grams of carb. If we divide by 15, we know that's one exchange. This will be very important to remember as you complete future assignments, particularly the one that has to do with estimating insulin levels for diabetics. So let's do some math. Let's say that we've determined that an adult male needs 2400 calories per day. As you learned in this first section of the text, at least 50% of our calories need to come from complex carbohydrate foods. So 50% of 2400 is 1200 calories. To convert calories into grams of carbohydrate, you have learned that one gram of carbohydrate is equal to four calories. So if we divide 1200 calories by four, we can convert that into 300 grams of carbohydrates per day. To know how many exchanges this is, we would divide by 15. That gives us 20 carb exchanges per day for our sample male. Now to see what that looks like in terms of real food, we've prepared a table for you. We have 20 carb exchanges to divide evenly throughout the day. So we're going to give them 5 for breakfast, 5 for lunch, 5 for dinner, and 2 at one snack and 2 exchanges at a 
later snack. So for breakfast, to approximate five carb exchanges, he can have toast, grits, cereal, milk, and orange juice. For lunch, the sandwich with its two slices of bread would equal two carbs. An apple, pretzels, and graham crackers would be the round out the five. For a snack, he can have a whole large banana. And you see for dinner, five carbs would be roll, potatoes, peas, milk, and peaches. And for snack, he could have cereal with milk and fruit to come up with three carb servings. We have not included the meat and fat list or vegetables on here as they don't contribute a whole lot of carbohydrate to the diet. It's important though that while following this diet that the person maintain low fat foods, eat very little sweets as possible. In MindTap, Appendix D has extensive information on the exchange system. You will need this resource to complete your homework assignments. Also, this material will be covered on the comprehensive final exam. So let's go to MindTap and look. If you go to the course and click on the MindTap link, this page will open. You can select the whole book icon. You can select chapters and scroll down until you see the exchange system. It's a good idea to read this appendix for information that we've covered. And for doing your homework, you'll need to pay particular attention to this piece. This provides all of the food lists and the serving sizes in each one. So make sure that you avail yourself to this when completing the two assignments in this course that relate to the exchange system. Again, you do not have to memorize serving sizes. You can look them up here. You do need to be able to assign foods to food groups with a reasonable amount of abbreviation. We talked about the fact that we're going to use just the medium fat meat. We're only going to go with the 2% milk. Once you get into the assignment, you'll see how we've abbreviated it. And that concludes this presentation on Introduction to the Exchange System.